So to start off this video, I'm going to be showing you guys where Zolcano is located. And as you can tell, this is the whole of Prifdenis. And Zolcano is conveniently located beside a bank right here. When looking at stats for this boss, obviously you're going to want to have as high mining, smithing, and runecrafting as possible. However, as you can tell, I only have 83 smithing and 91 runecrafting, which of course helps with getting MVP some of the times. Personally, I would have to say that base 80s is probably best for this boss. However, it's not required as I believe you only need to have Song of the Elves completed in order to participate in the Zolcano activity. So I'd say if you're below 80 mining, smithing, and runecrafting, give it a shot anyways, but uh, don't expect any MVPs coming your way anytime soon. So this is the gear that I use for Zolcano. I use three of the graceful pieces, regen bracelet with the hit points cape to have that quadruple restore rate. Uh, the offhand doesn't matter at all, nor does the ring as I don't have a crystal pickaxe. The rod is blessing is decent for the prayer bonus, assuming you're going to be using the rapid heal prayer. And since I'm not using full graceful, the boots of lightness provide a greater weight reduction. Now you can also use the Varrock Diaries uh, chest plate, which will also give you an occasional chance of getting double the ore. Must haves, however, are the dragon pickaxe, of course, some weight reduction gear, and naturally, hit point regeneration so that you can negate that damage that you're going to accrue over time, even if you dodge everything. Naturally, when attempting Zolcano, the better pickaxe you have, the better chance you have to grab MVP. However, to my knowledge, I believe the crystal pickaxe only provides an extra chance to get ore faster. When you're looking at pickaxes, the crystal pickaxe is going to be the best, followed by the dragon pickaxe or any variation, followed by the rune pickaxe. Once you're a bit experienced, I recommend two stamina potion fours and eight karam ones. Now, of course, you can exchange this with any food. I know some people use brews and really stock up their inventories with like 10 brews and four stams. This isn't really required, however, use your best discretion when preparing for this boss and your skill level. For newer players, I just recommend taking more food, whether it's 2 or 4, it doesn't matter. It really depends on team size, how much inventory space you're going to need. So generally when you start off a Zolcano run, you want to begin in the northeast corner rock formation. Have your camera rotated so that you can see all four rock formations, and as soon as as you see the glowing rock formation, head for that one. Now how much ore you mine is really dependent on your team size. Ultimately, I would recommend 3 to 7 people absolutely max on this boss, as any more players will make the loot undesirable, and any less just takes too long. So yes, that means I would not recommend this as a solo or duo boss. Naturally, everything I'm saying in this video is my opinion, and of course, maybe some better strategies will come up in the future. Once you've got all of the ore that is required for your kill, you're going to want to run to the east side of the room to refine it. Once everything is refined, you're going to want to make your way to the west side of the room to imbue all of the refined ore. Once you have all of your imbued tephra or the amount desired to throw at the boss, you're going to want to do one of two things. Either one, you're going to want to start throwing your imbued tephra at the boss, or two, you're going to want to wait for the demonic symbols to appear. Now the demonic symbols act as a buff or a damaging object. You want to avoid the red, stand on the blue. So once Zolcano has been taken down by the imbued Tefer, you're going to want to get as close as you can to the boss. The reason being, you can get the maximum amount of damage on the boss to increase your chances at MVP. Now of course when looking at team sizes, I'd have to say that 4 players is the optimal amount. However, 5 players yields the best times. Now some tips I would like to give you guys. At any phase when you have Zolcano down and you're mining, as soon as the red slash orange circle appears below her, you're going to want to click the glowing rock formation. It doesn't matter what side of the room this is in, your character will path through the boss and reach it without taking any damage. Another tip I would like to provide you guys with is always, always grab a few extra Tephra as uh, you will always be able to throw some extra out and have a better chance at MVP. 
Now, of course, this depends on team size because if you're running a team size of greater than six or seven, yeah, the chances of you being able to use all of that will greatly decrease. In a team of eight, leaving any more than three Tephra in your inventory is sort of silly as you will not be able to use all of it at the demonic circles phase. By the way, attacking those little golems provides the imbued Tephra drop. Pre-update, the golem only dropped to the person who did the most damage. Now it drops to everyone. It's up to you as to if you actually decide to use your imbued Tephra to give yourself a chance at getting more imbued Tephra from that little golem. Correct me in the comment section if I'm wrong for any of this, or if you have done Zolcano, if you'd like to provide some tips or feedback on the video, feel free to comment that down below, and also, if you have any questions, comment that down below. Last but not least, ashes signify if you've gotten MVP or not, and if you've gotten MVP, you get an extra loot roll and a better chance at the pet. Anyways, thank you all for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed this guide. Share it with some friends and subscribe if you're new. Also, be sure to check out other videos which will be on screen right now, like my most recent RNG video where I actually get the Zolcano pet.